All right, let's kick things off with a good old game of iPhone or Sony camera. Cast your votes now for these three night shots and we'll go through the results at the end of the video. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm an outspoken supporter of Team Android for the past decade or so. I've been a loyal supporter of the customizability and the range of control that Android phones give you. But after 10 long years, I finally made the switch from Android phone to iPhone, just because it makes the whole creative process a lot easier with the Apple ecosystem, having AirDrop and so on. So today I want to take my new sexy iPhone 15 Pro Max out in the streets of London to do some nighttime cityscape and street photography. So in this video, we'll take some daytime shots with the iPhone as well as some nighttime shots. I think daytime shots wise, phones are really good these days and it becomes really difficult, if not impossible, to tell the difference between an iPhone shot and a mirrorless camera shot during the day. However, it's really the low light situations at night that I'm looking forward to comparing because that's where phones tend to struggle the most because they have a much smaller sensor than your mirrorless cameras. They don't capture as much light and the results aren't as good. So let's have a look and jump right into it. Let me grab a picture of this neon sign. It looks quite cool. You can see how uh, it's flashing a lot on the screen though. Yeah, actually that worked out pretty well. Thank you very much. If you're in the area, in St. Paul's or in Liverpool Street as well, Three Uncles, I highly recommend great Chinese food in London. Look at that, beautiful. What about this spacey looking building here? Details are quite cool. I like the, uh, the silvery metal look. I think this building is called the Lloyds Building. Always been a fan. Let me walk in this direction a bit more and uh, see what kind of shots we can grab over there. Okay, I've got a bit closer to this funky looking metal building. I'm gonna try and zoom in to five times and get a detailed shot of these boxes. There's something about the repetition of the same sort of architectural structure that I find quite satisfying. Five is just a little bit too zoomed in, so let me step back a bit. Something like this. How do I compose this? The sky isn't particularly interesting today because it's just like a grey blob in the sky. Let's see, maybe we can slap a nice little edit on it and make it look a bit better. The pipes and the sort of industrial looking architecture. I quite like zooming in for buildings like this one because if you zoomed in and you don't even know exactly what it is you're looking at, I don't know, it looks kind of a, looks kind of visually interesting sometimes, especially when it's symmetrical and sort of pleasing to the eye like this one. I want people to look at the picture and be like, ooh, that's, that looks kind of neat. I wonder what that is. I think somewhere around here is one of my favorite lookup locations as well. Okay, here we are. So just sort of to the left of the Lloyds building is a really good lookup spot location. Let me show you. There we go. Pretty cool spot. And yeah, you definitely need a wide angle here, I'd say, just to be able to capture all three of these sort of buildings. So I'm gonna go into 0 0.5 on my iPhone. Look straight up and snap the shot. And this will be a good kind of photo to test out the, the raw capabilities of this camera because there's pretty bright bits. Obviously the sky is gonna be fairly bright. There's also uh, pretty dark shadows, you know, underneath all of the structures. Oh, what about this? It's kind of cool. I like the layers in this shot. And the, the walkie-talkie, not the gherkin, the walkie-talkie is always an interesting building to look at. Colors are pretty flat, but it'll be a perfect sort of test for my mobile presets, which I'm planning to use to edit all of the shots in this video. Ooh, clean texture shot. I quite like this. Love a good texture shot. There's a neat looking escalator here, which naturally makes me think, ooh, that's a leading line, that's nice. These kinds of things, wide angle usually looks good. Let me have a look. Uh, wide angle is a little bit too wide. Actually, no, it kind of works. It's annoying that this pillar is there because otherwise it would have been a nice symmetrical shot. Let's give it a go. So usually with wide angle photography and leading lines, it's nice to lower yourself to the ground a bit more. It just accentuates the whole perspective thing. So I'm actually flipping my phone upside down here. I'm gonna show as much of the roof as possible because that's quite an interesting looking structure. Boom. What about one times? Does one times look good? One times is okay. Ah, yeah, I wish that wasn't there. Oh well, can't always get what you want. Also, I really like the look of those lifts. The one with the red, red light. 
Let me see. Ooh, well, that's cool. That's kind of spacey looking. You don't really see that silver and red color scheme often in the city. Just a bunch of geometry in this shot. I like the sharp corners and the round sort of spiral thing. Contrast each other. Okay, well, I just ran into this guy who was just painting this building and look at this. This is amazing. Look at the detail on that. And uh, it turns out it's also a guy called Jimmy. Jimmy. Is that, your, is that your real name? Is that it your... It is, yes. It is, yeah. Not enough of those. It's actually yeah. on my passport, you know. People think it's, it's like as well, the, yeah. the fake white name that you fake yeah. when you come. But, uh, but yeah, that's awesome. Check out Jimmy on, uh, on Instagram. This Thank stuff you. is awesome, man. Hey, the skill of that Jimmy Lou 9 on Instagram. He was just freehanding that sketch of those buildings. I was genuinely perplexed because I was like, there's no way the human hand can be this like precise, but turns out it can be. Okay. I want to stand here and wait for one of these buses to cross because I want to test out uh, one of the features of the iPhone, which is the inbuilt sort of long exposure feature. From what I've seen, uh, I'm not convinced fully that it's going to work out uh, just because it doesn't look like a real long exposure. It seems to be more computer generated, but let's see. Uh, so what I'm going to do is right here in the top right corner, I'm turning Raw Max off because for the iPhone long exposure thing to work, you need to have live pictures enabled. So that bus didn't go in the right direction. I'm gonna wait for someone to cross sort of from right to left. Okay, so I just took three live photos then. Let me see if this worked. So if I go into my phone, in the top left corner, you see there's live loop, bounce, long exposure. What does long exposure look like? Oh, that's a bit shit. Super faint. Now you can see the light trail, but it's really, really faint. Yeah, I don't think I can fix this in post either. No way of making this any different, right? Okay, well, maybe I have to try this shot at night again for the sort of light streaks to be a bit thicker because right now, as you can see, it's really, really see-through. Um, so yeah, I don't like that. I'm gonna move on to the next location. Okay, so I kind of like this shot because you can see um, the walkie-talkie just peeking out between these two buildings that have drastically different color schemes. I like how many things are going on here. There's just a lot of layers and a lot of sort of visual focal points for, for any person looking at the pictures to focus on. So you've got the underground side, you've got that lovely clock, and you obviously have the very unique looking walkie-talkie in the background. I'm gonna walk towards St. Paul's actually. I'm gonna check out what I can do there. Okay, this is an absolute classic for uh, London photography. If you're ever in London for the first time, you want to take some photos, this is probably, this is actually one of the first photos I took uh, when I moved here and I was getting into photography all those years ago. But the reason why this is so popular is you can see obviously St. Paul's, right? Which is a big landmark in itself. You then have a symmetrical shot. So left and right kind of look the same. You also have natural sort of leading lines towards St. Paul. Uh, number three. So you already have like three things that are usually already worth shooting and all of those combined together and having the reflections of St. Paul's on either side uh, result in a pretty cool image. So turn Raw Max back on. No longer on the live setting. Just waiting for these guys to slightly move out of the shot. Boom. I quite like how uh, I can already tell that the light from the shots on either side is kind of orangey which is going to be great for the edit later on because I can make all of the glass bits a bit bluer and then you got this whole orange and teal contrast thing going on. Let me head in and see what else I can shoot here. Oh, maybe something like this. Texture shot, maybe? I don't know. Let's see, I'll snap it now and see if it's any good. I'm also going to go downstairs a little bit because maybe I can incorporate this staircase into the shot as well as some kind of leading line potentially. Uh, maybe. There's a lot of people here, so I don't know how good the shot is going to look. Can I zoom in a bit? Zoom in twice, maybe? I do like the reflective thing just here. I think that does look kind of interesting visually. I'll just take the photos anyways and see if I can make it look cool in the edit. Uh, this would be such a cool leading line if only it was actually leading towards something. Super quick note. All the photos that you see in this video were obviously taken with the iPhone, but they were also edited on the iPhone using my mobile Lightroom preset. 
So if you like the idea of editing on the go, or if you just want a shortcut by having a good editing base to start your workflow from, make sure to check out my Lightroom presets on my website. Okay, back to the video. All right, here we are. We are at the Lancaster Hotel. I think that's what it's called. Got a last minute invite because Jan is doing a fashion show tonight. And we are just in between, well, they just finished their run. So we thought while she's all dressed up, we're going to get some cool shots here. So Ivan right here is the mastermind behind this beautiful dress. So make sure to show him some love on Instagram. Speak to the audience. <laughs> You're used to this. <laughs> Can you look at me again, John? <laughs> Hear all the beats going up. <laughs> Can you do the leg thing again? Perfect. I've never speed ran this many different outfits in like 30 minutes. This is quite a quite an intense session. Okay, it is now nighttime here in London and this is really where we're gonna start, you know, putting the iPhone through its paces because sure, during the daytime, iPhones are great, most smartphones are great, you know. You can't really tell the difference if you're taking a picture of say just a building during the daytime, whether it was a Samsung, an iPhone, another phone, or even a professional DSLR camera. Reason being, when you're taking, let's say, architecture shots during the day, your aperture is going to be quite high, right? So everything's going to be in focus, everything's going to be relatively sharp. So unless you're really, you know, going into pixel peeping territory, you're not going to be able to tell on the smartphone screen the difference between a Sony full frame shot versus an APS-C shot versus a phone shot. During the day, you know, the, the playing field is sort of even, but as you all might know, uh, depending on the sensor size, the bigger the sensor you have, the more light it lets in. That's why full frame cameras are better than APS-C cameras when it comes to low light performance. And that's why traditionally phones kind of suck at night because they have a tiny sensor, right? It's like barely comparable to the size of a full frame Sony camera. So how is it going to compete? Now, this is where the real test begins. So I'm going to start walking around, take some shots with the iPhone at night and see, you know, how well are the shadows preserved? What's the dynamic range like? And you know, how much detail can I recover in editing? Let's have a look. There's a guy on his phone who looks kind of cool. It's gonna be a super dark image, but let's see if I can snap a shot of him. I like that he's the only subject on the stairs and he's just like chatting to his mate, got a cool hat on. Very sort of dimly lit shot. Let's see how good the quality of this raw file is. Let me see if I can get a shot of five guys. I do always like a bit of sort of neon lights, American diner kind of energy. I don't know. Not sure I like it. I'll take it anyway. Let's see if it ends up working out or not. We, uh, before we cross over Millennium Bridge, I'm just going to go to the right of the front of St. Paul's because I want to try out a long exposure shot. I tried it earlier in the day when it was still kind of like pre-blue hour, the sun was just setting and it didn't really work out because the bus trail ended up being a little bit too thin and I wonder if that's because it was too bright. So let me try it again uh, now at night time. So I'm going to go over to that phone box over there. So I've got the phone booth in there, got some pause in the background. Okay, that's my shot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into live photo, enable that. Okay. <laughs> got three live pictures just then. Let me see if that was any good. Long exposure. Nah, it's not it chief, it's not it. It kind of stretches it out too long. I wish I had full manual control of these settings, but it looks like it's kind of artificially repeating it as well. The trail doesn't look very organic. Uh, that's actually something that I was able to do with my Samsung back in the day. What if I just do it like this? when it's real slow. Yeah, with the Samsung, you know, with Android, it's the classic. Android kind of lets you take full control of everything, including the camera app, whereas you're a bit more locked in with iPhone and I haven't quite figured out yet how to quote unquote unlock its full potential. I'm sure that there's some pro camera apps and stuff, but today was mostly to demonstrate the native capabilities of the phone. Okay, that's a bit better when the bus was slow. What about this one? The bus was really slow for that one. Yeah, there we go. This is actually what I wanted. That looks decent. I favorite that and keep going. 
Okay, so what I want to try here is um, another kind of long exposure shot. So what I quite like taking on this bridge is a shot of uh, sort of the shard and the colorful water. Um, because the bridges are like nicely lit up, uh, you can get a really nice sort of smooth water reflection type shot if you take a long exposure of the moving water. Because if you're taking a picture of, let's say, four seconds, for example, it averages out all the movements of the water, uh, resulting in a really nice sort of satisfying look. Now, you can obviously do that if you have full manual controls of your camera, which famously, we don't really on the iPhone. So I'm just gonna try my best uh, and recreate it. So screen recording is on. I'm gonna turn on live photo for this one. Take the picture. So what happens if I press long exposure now? Okay, it's smoothed it out a bit for sure, but not as much as you know it would, would be possible. I'm just seeing, am I missing time lapse? No, that's not it. I was checking if I wasn't missing a um, like any kind of setting here, but I don't think I was. Okay, I'm gonna take another shot here, but this time I'm gonna turn on uh, the raw settings instead of the live photo. So this is one of the most comprehensive views of London on Millennium Bridge because you have Tower Bridge, you've got Shard on the right, you've got Bank on the left. Pretty cool spot. And turn a bit further over to the left and you've got St. Paul's as well. That shot's going to be a good uh, editing base as well. I wanted to see how much you can edit a um, nighttime sort of cityscape shot uh, because those are quite often ones that phones tend to struggle with just because of the bright lights and the dark shadows. Ooh, okay. Quite liking this uh, natural framing of the bridge structure uh, diagonally across the shot with tower bridge in the background. So I'm gonna zoom in, not two times, five times even. Focus on tower bridge and boom, take that shot. Ooh, what about this one? The shot of bank here as well that you can do. Maybe something like this. This, we've got a city cruise boat in the background as well. Okay, we're approaching a super popular nighttime photo location of St. Paul's Cathedral. We're still at the end of Millennium Bridge, you've got a nice symmetrical shot, really nice leading lines, and you have this cool sort of blue tinted glass on either side that you can really pull out in editing. Okay, I'm take a couple. Oh, that's so satisfying already. I love this shot so much. One time zoom, two time zoom. Oh, interesting. Now it's taking a pretty long exposure, actually. Okay. Yeah, the iPhone's detecting that this is a pretty low-level image. Low-light image, sorry. And uh, automatically goes into the long exposure. And the reason why you're able to actually take a long exposure with your iPhone is because it has really good stabilization, which it obviously isn't the case for, um, let's say, a full-frame Sony camera. There's no way that you'd be able to take a three-second handheld long exposure and it still look halfway you know usable one thing that i want to try out with my phone is a shot that i recently took with my um sony aps-c camera with my sigma 56 mil which is a uh, same pause shot but with a prism so one of these bad boys normally how i use it is i hold it against my camera lens and it creates this cool sort of rainbow like fractal effect so I've zoomed into five times here on my phone because I like this shot of St. Paul's with the bridge. And now I'm gonna hold the prism against my lens. Careful not to scratch it too much. It's really tricky to find the right angle with these. So you kind of have to hold it against your phone a bit, hold it against your lens, sorry, and just kind of keep rotating it around until you like what you see. Take one like this, keep rotating, rotate, rotate. Ooh. Something here. Oh, there we go. Got another same pause actually, which I like. That's what I was looking for. A bit skeptical about the long exposure. Let's see uh, what the final shot ends up looking like. Let me see if that worked out even. Do you know what? That's kind of cool. I like that. I'll edit that later. But that was a good proof of concept to show that you can use photography accessories like the prism with your phone too. And I'm sure the same applies to lens filters like the mist filters or star filters. It's always gonna be a bit awkward holding it against your phone lens. So unless you get, you know, a third hand, sometimes it can be a bit tricky to balance everything. Actually, just looking at the prism shot again that I just got, and it's kind of sick. I'm gonna jump into Lightroom just to throw a quick edit on it to see what it looks like. Don't wanna wait till I'm home too excited about this shot. So 
There we go. Preset. One of the nighttime ones, I imagine. Maybe Ghost Town. Let me uh, lower that down a bit. Ooh. You know what? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. For a phone shot, I mean, that's quite impressive actually. Okay, I'm impressed now. Actually, while I'm at it, let me quickly try the um, long exposure shot from earlier as well. Going Lightroom, got my lovely presets imported here. I actually quite like this whole editing on the phone thing. It's all very new to me because I usually always edit on laptop. But now that I've realized that there's the whole cloud-based Lightroom thing, it's actually really convenient and quite easy to use. Now I'm just going to brighten up reds a little bit as well. Luminance, boom. Wow. This is a phone shot as well? Okay, okay. I see you, iPhone, I see you. It's pretty sick. I quite like the look of this old Thames side inn. I quite like the sort of dimly lit entrance there with the arch. Let's see, one, two, no, what about three? Okay, let me wait for the guy to be in a slightly better position. Maybe him walking in. Any of these work or are they gonna be blurry? Actually, wow, I was expecting there to be loads of motion blur because the guy was walking into the establishment in a low light environment, but not really any motion blur at all. All right, sweet. And the shot of these guys just chilling in front of the wine merchant. I like the lighting. Let's see if we can throw an edit on it to make it look like a street photography shot. I spotted this crane next to that building. I'm not sure if it shows up properly on the GoPro, but as you can probably tell, the crane itself, like the red metal, is super, super dark. Whereas the sign that is on the crane is actually quite bright. So if I go into five times like this, okay, already you can see that it's exposing for the building and the red metal of the crane. So it's overexposing the sign, which is not legible right now. But if I take a raw image, let me see if it can be recovered. So I'm gonna snap it. It's gonna take a long exposure over three seconds. Cool. Wow, it's really well exposed and really, um, really bright. However, I don't think you can actually recover the sign though. It's supposed to say gray star on it, but let's see what Lightroom's saying. So I'll just go into light and I lower the whites. Oh yeah, nah, that thing's not recoverable. Okay, interesting. iPhone does a great job though. I mean, most of the image is pretty decently exposed. It's just that one very bright sign. I wasn't expecting it to get it. But yeah, good to know. So I flipped my phone upside down just to get a bit closer to the rail like that. I like that there's one person leaning over. Boom. What I like is that the iPhone actually rotates the photo automatically. Because I took this upside down, but it figured it out and now it's like that. It's pretty neat. Okay, I got another nice shot here. So I think this might look a bit better actually. 0.5, yeah, I like that. There's a lot of patterns and circles and sort of leading lines happening. Boom. Sweet. Oh. That's quite nice. I really like the sort of blue light running across this. It's pretty neat. 0.5. And then at one times as well. I like how bright the water is. Maybe I can long exposure it in post. Ooh. Yeah, look. So that's normal. Right, the water's very crisp, very sharp. Mm -hmm. And long exposure, instant smooth. Easy. See, I missed the manual control, yes, but it is quite nice to have this at the press of a button. Okay, let me do this one. Anything but yeah, it lacks. There's no pro mode. Yeah, I was trying to find pro mode earlier. I said, there is none. There's no it's so mode. weird. You need to use like external apps then. A little bit further. There's this really cool shot that Optical Joe did once. Actually, can I do this on Photoshop? I don't even know if I can. Let me try. No, I don't think it's right. I need to go further back. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. So, go into the phone five times. Yeah, yeah, okay. I wonder if I can do this on Photoshop Mobile. That would be a cool proof of concept. And I was in fact able to edit everything on my phone. So first using the mobile Lightroom app and my preset, I color graded the image. And then I jumped into the Photoshop Express app on my iPhone to 
mask out the sort of wall on the left and then flip it onto the right side to get a pretty clean result if you ask me. So what are my thoughts on using the iPhone 15 Pro Max for nighttime cityscape and street photography? Honestly, I'm quite impressed. I really enjoy using the iPhone to both shoot and edit these photos. And you know, using the iPhone's RAW format, the dynamic range looked great, the colors were really flexible so I could sort of shift things in, in Lightroom, changing color slightly and so on. And lastly, the shadows were decently recoverable, which tends to be the weakness when you take nighttime shots with your phone, because like I said at the start, the sensor's smaller, less and less light, so the shadows tend to be too dark. I actually did a couple of rounds of that iPhone or Sony camera game on my Instagram story, and on average, half of the people got it wrong each time, which is an incredible result if you think about the cameras that we're comparing here. I've really enjoyed the fact that I was able to both take and edit the photos on my iPhone. There's just something about the simplicity of that workflow that really appeals to me. As soon as I took the photos and had them in Lightroom, there was part of me that just really wanted to jump into the Lightroom app and just start editing because I just knew how much sort of easy and more convenient it was to just be able to do almost everything that I tend to do when editing on the laptop, but in the palm of my hand. Even when zooming in, if you're a true pixel peeper, I feel like the difference between the iPhone 15 Pro Max and my Sony a6500 isn't worlds apart. And at the end of the day, the best camera that you have is the camera that you have with you. And considering how much more convenient and portable the iPhone is compared to a mirrorless camera, I think that's a massive plus and a really impressive result. Now, while the iPhone did a great job today for sort of nighttime cityscape and street photography, I'm still a bit skeptical about whether or not you can use the iPhone to get nice nighttime portrait shots. If the iPhone can take really good nighttime portraits, then I do see a possibility that one day these mobile phone cameras may even compete with or completely replace our mirrorless equivalents. But that's a topic for another video. If you're keen to see a comparison between the iPhone and the Sony camera when it comes to nighttime portraits, let me know in the comments below. For now, thanks again for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.